Hi everyone, this is Professor Enda Science, and today I want to discuss the commutation and anti-commutation relationships of quantum field operators in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Quantum field operators describe the creation and annihilation of quantum particles at specific points in space. To capture the correct particle exchange symmetries, bosonic field operators obey a set of commutation relations, while fermionic field operators obey a set of anti-commutation relations. In this video, we derive these commutation and anti-commutation relations for quantum field operators. Let's go! Let's start with a refresher on quantum field operators. We start with discrete bases U and consider the associated creation and annihilation operators. Field operators are the creation and annihilation operators associated with the position representation. To build them, we consider the continuous position basis labeled by R, and the creation field operator is psi dagger of R, and we can write it in terms of the creation operators in the U basis like this. The expansion coefficients are the complex conjugates of the wave functions associated with the basis states. Similarly, the annihilation field operator is psi of r, and we can also write it in terms of the annihilation operators in the u basis like this. And again, the expansion coefficients are the wave functions associated with the basis states. How can we understand these field operators? Just like this creation operator in the U basis creates a particle in state Ui, this creation field operator creates a particle at position R. And just like this annihilation operator in the U basis removes a particle in state Ui, this annihilation field operator removes a particle at position R. This is all we need to know about field operators in this video. But for a more detailed discussion, do check out the corresponding video linked in the description. The field operators are just our usual creation and annihilation operators, but written in the very specific basis spanned by the position eigenstates. As such, all the properties of the creation and annihilation operators we're used to also work for the field operators. To convince you of this fact, in this video we explore the commutation and anti-commutation relations of the field operators. Let's start with bosons, whose associated creation and annihilation operators obey commutation relations. First, remember that we write the commutator of two operators A and B between square brackets, and we define it as equal to AB minus BA. For the U basis, we have that the commutator of two creation operators vanishes, that the commutator of two annihilation operators also vanishes, and that the commutator of an annihilation and the creation operator is equal to delta ij. And remember that this delta ij is the Kronecker delta symbol, which is 1 if i is equal to j, and 0 otherwise. We next move to the position representation, and we first consider the commutator of two creation field operators at R, and at R prime. Using the usual expression for these field operators in terms of creation operators in the U basis, we get the commutator of this sum over creation operators in the U basis with this other sum over creation operators in the U basis. Using the standard rules of commutators, we can rewrite the commutator of the sums as equal to the sums of the commutators, and we get this relatively long expression. These commutators here are now just the usual commutators in the U basis, and using this result up here, we see that in this case they vanish. This means we end up with zero. So, the commutator of two creation field operators vanishes. Using a very similar procedure, we can show that the commutator of two annihilation field operators 
also vanishes. Let's make some room, and let's write down the final combination we need. The commutator between an annihilation field operator and the creation field operator. Using the usual expression for these field operators in terms of annihilation and creation operators in the U basis, we get the commutator of this sum over annihilation operators in the U basis with this sum over creation operators in the U basis. Using the standard rules of commutators, we can rewrite the commutator of the sum as equal to the sum of the commutators, and we get this relatively long expression. These commutators here are now just the usual commutators in the U basis, and using this result up here, we see that in this case we get delta ij. Overall, we end up with this long expression. We can then carry out the summation over j, and thanks to the Kronecker delta here, the only term that survives is the one for which j is equal to i. We're almost there. We can next rewrite this basis state wave function in terms of the original bracket, getting this summation over the bracket, and we can also rewrite this basis state wave function in terms of the corresponding bracket. We can now move the summation to this point, and we have the bra r, the summation over the outer product of the u basis states, and then the ket r prime. This here is just the resolution of the identity in the u basis, so we end up with the bracket between r and r prime. As the position basis is orthonormal, this is equal to the Dirac delta function of r minus r prime. Let's summarize our results so far. For bosons, we need to consider the commutation relations between field operators. And remember that the commutator between two operators A and B is given by AB minus BA. We found that the creation field operators commute, that the annihilation field operators also commute, and that the commutator between an annihilation and the creation field operator is given by the Dirac delta function of R minus R prime. For fermions, we need to consider the anti-commutation relations between the field operators. Remember that the anti-commutator between two operators A and B, which we write in curly brackets, is defined as AB plus BA. Using a similar strategy to the one we've just used for the commutators of bosonic field operators, we would find that the anti-commutator between fermionic creation field operators is zero, that the anti-commutator between fermionic annihilation operators is also zero, and that the anti-commutator between fermionic annihilation and creation field operators is equal to the Dirac delta function. Again, these results are just what we would expect for standard creation and annihilation operators when described in a continuous basis. Given the similarity between the commutators for bosonic field operators and the anti-commutators for fermionic field operators, it's common to use a shorthand notation that combines the commutation and anti-commutation relations into a single expression. Let's write this expression for two arbitrary operators a and b and add the subindex minus eta outside the square brackets. We define this quantity as equal to ab minus eta ba. Eta can take one of two values. We define it as equal to plus one for bosons and as equal to minus one for fermions. At this point you should convince yourself that for eta plus 1 this expression reduces to the usual commutator, and for eta minus 1 this expression reduces to the usual anti-commutator. This compact expression now contains the relevant relationship for both bosons and fermions. 
We can use it to write the commutation and anti-commutation relations for the field operators for both types of particles. And we get this for two creation field operators. We get this for two annihilation field operators. And we get this for the combination of an annihilation and the creation field operator. These are now valid for both bosons and fermions, we just need to choose the relevant value for eta for each. To finish, we'll generalize the commutation and anti-commutation relations between field operators to the case of particles with spin. First, remember that when working with particles of spin s, we consider the augmented basis states labeled by r and by sigma. Each position eigenstate is now associated with a particular spin eigenvalue sigma here, where for a particle of spin s, sigma can take any of the values minus s, minus s plus 1, all the way to s minus 1 and s. The overlap between basis states is such that this augmented basis is still orthonormal in both position and spin degrees of freedom. Position is continuous, so we get this Dirac delta function, and spin is discrete, so we get this Kronecker delta. In this augmented basis for spinful particles, we write the creation field operators as psi sigma dagger of R, and they're given by the sum over the wave functions of the U basis times the associated creation operators in the U basis. In a similar way, we can define the annihilation field operator for spinful particles with the usual sum. Using a similar derivation to the one we've just discussed, we can write the commutation and anti-commutation relations for bosonic and fermionic field operators. Starting with two creation field operators, the commutator for bosonic fields and the anti-commutator for fermionic fields vanish. For two annihilation operators, we also get a vanishing result. And for an annihilation and the creation field operator, we have a Dirac delta function for the continuous position degrees of freedom and the Kronecker delta for the discrete spin degrees of freedom. And this is it. These are the commutation relations for bosonic and fermionic field operators when we have particles with spin. The commutation relations for bosonic field operators and the anti-commutation relations for fermionic field operators are an extremely useful tool when working with quantum field operators. We use them constantly in later videos, so make sure you become familiar with them. And as always, I hope you like the video and please subscribe.